Welcome to IDB. The iPhone 10 has been out for roughly a week now. So this is more or less kind of a journal entry on my experience with the phone for about a week or so and how it compares to the iPhone 8, which I had for a few weeks as well as we ran a plethora of tests and videos on that. So which one do I really think is better and which one is maybe worth you buying? Before we get into all the fun stuff, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Kadabe. They are a maker of really great iPhone cases. They focus on the thin, sleek, and minimalistic cases. A lot of the shell type ones like this are really awesome. They fit really precisely and just offer a really good grip to your phone compared to a lot of the other thin ones out there. They also offer some that have a lot of protection like this case here, which is called the sheath. You can find all about Kadabe and all the cases they offer for the iPhone 10, as well as many other smartphones out there uh, at their link below in the description. With that said, let's go ahead and get started and see how I felt about the iPhone 10 after a week's worth of use. The real question I had was, was this practical design really worth the upgrade? Was it worth the upgrade from my iPhone 7 or a 6? And does the 8 make more sense than the 10? Is the, all these trade-offs really worth it? It's so much cheaper just to go for the iPhone 8, or in this case, the iPhone 8 Plus. And while I did have a few small gripes about the iPhone 10, I really felt it was the right choice for me between the 8 Plus and the 10. Let's start off with a few things that I noticed in my first week that definitely got on my nerves just a little bit, at least so far. And the first up is, while that display is gorgeous, there's still quite a few apps that have not been updated for it yet. And obviously that's something we're going to see fixed, hopefully over the long term, but I really wish more were fixed now. Like games that just launched, like the new South Park game, there are still giant black bars on either side of the display. And it's really kind of annoying. This is a brand new game out and they've known about the iPhone 10 for quite some time now. And yet they weren't able to make the adjustments to get it to fill the display. If they couldn't do it in the months since the iPhone 10 was announced, how long is it going to take them, if at all, to update it to take advantage of this new display if they couldn't get it by the time the game launched? When the iPhone Plus size models launched, it actually took developers, some of them years, to update their phones or their apps to adjust to that much bigger display. Games that have updated to the iPhone 10 display look absolutely amazing. I love the graphics. Alto's adventure here looks sublime. It's so nice on that huge edge-to-edge -edge display, and I don't mind the notch at all. When you are typing in different applications, I feel like there's a lot of wasted space at the bottom. You'll notice we have the emoji icon and the microphone. And while this little home bar does allow you to switch between apps and go back to your home screen, I just feel like there's so much wasted space there. They could have made that smaller or done something different, but it just feels like a missed opportunity. Control Center is also a little bit annoying, having it being in that top right hand corner. Overall, it's not probably a huge deal, and it's something I'm doing to adjust to, but definitely, definitely something I noticed as being a little bit of a hindrance as I'm trying to use the phone smoothly with all the new gestures. And I've heard many other reviewers say the same exact thing as me, the notch is pretty much a non-issue. I've forgotten completely about it ever since I started using the phone. The one thing I do really appreciate is this gorgeous new display. You can kind of tell the difference here with the iPhone 10, it looks much better in person, but it just looks stunning. And blacks especially are absolutely just jaw-dropping how much they blend in to that background of the phone. And just that high dynamic range display is pretty awesome, whether you're looking at your HDR photos or watching videos. When you are watching videos, I do prefer to have it full screen. I know a lot of people may not like there's that notch in the way, but it's honestly something that I don't even notice anymore as I'm watching. Like it just seems to blend in for the most part and again, it just seems like a non-issue. The really long the display though is a little bit awkward for photos. If I did try to do zoom in a photo so it took advantage of the full display, I feel like I'm losing most of the photo. So I really have to kind of pinch the photos back out to be normal size, but then you have ridiculously large black bars, even larger black bars that you would normally see on every other iPhone. Do I miss the home button after spending time with the iPhone 10? Absolutely not. I love the new gestures and every time I go back to my iPhone 7 Plus or the 8 Plus, it just feels annoying to have to press the button and it just seems slow and clunky in comparison. It is a little bit awkward when you jump between apps that are you know, vertical and horizontal because then the home button essentially switches from the bottom of the phone to the side of the phone and you have to rotate. So it is a little bit odd. I do love the design of the phone, I love the stainless steel bands around the edges, and that all glass design is pretty stunning. It definitely feels premium and has a much better grip on it than the aluminum phones that we saw in the past. One of the benefits of that 
glass back is you can now wirelessly charge your phone. And while I pretty much kind of discounted this because of the slow speed, I pretty much assumed this would be more of an annoyance than anything, I've actually really started liking it. Especially with portable battery packs, I've tried a few that are pretty awesome because you can charge your phone on the go without having to take a lightning cable with you. It seems like a small thing, but I'm sure people are going to really appreciate wireless charging as more and more restaurants and airports and hotels all start to build that into their existing architecture and furniture. This makes it more convenient because then whenever you're out at Starbucks or at the airport, you can always just be charging your phone and not have to worry about it. Speaking of battery life, I haven't had to worry about that pretty much at all. My first few days I went through a little bit more than usual as I was cranking out videos and just exploring all the new features, but since then, it's been more and more just daily use and I don't have to think about it at all, similar to how I do with my iPad. It just makes it through the day without me having to worry if it's actually there or not. Face ID has also been pretty awesome. It's been very spot on with only a few times that it was kind of not working. Like in the morning when I'm trying to like look at my phone while I'm still in bed and there's a pillow covering half my face, that actually will work. I just have to move the phone further away. I was holding it too close, but as long as I had my phone about a foot away from my face, even with a pillow covering half of it, it was still able to detect and unlock, which is pretty spectacular. The cameras here on the iPhone 10 also hold up really well. I compared them to the photos that I had been taking with my iPhone 7 Plus, and they were substantially better, especially in low light and in portrait mode, which are probably the two most common situations that I take photos. There was noticeably less grain, which is definitely something I'm always looking for. In the portrait mode photos, that was something that I saw a lot and it was really starting to get to me, but that wider aperture of the telelens definitely helps that. Now, while you can do portrait mode and all those portrait lighting things on the front facing camera, I thought it was cool, but it's probably not something I'm going to use a lot of. I love the portrait lighting for standard portrait photos, but taking portrait selfies, I, maybe my girlfriend would be more into this than I am. But that camera does have a lot of other great benefits other than just touch ID. Like obviously you have those portrait mode photos for people who do like to take portrait selfies. You have face ID to get in, but turns out one of the biggest features was an emoji. A few people I knew who were dead set on just getting the 8 or the 8 plus are now committed to getting the iPhone 10 just because they want to play with these animated emojis. It, it seems kind of silly to me, but it is impressive the amount of people that love this silly little feature. And things we've been seeing from them online, like people stitching them together into little videos, these seem like it's gonna be a great feature that's going to expand over time as Apple adds more and more characters. As I get close to the return window of my iPhone 10, I have to ask myself again, is it worth the amount of money I've spent on an iPhone 10 compared to what I could have spent on just an iPhone 8 Plus and got many of the same features? And to be honest, yeah, the iPhone 10 is gorgeous. The display alone is probably worth it for me and the camera built into that. I absolutely love the edge to edge display. It looks fantastic and it just blends right in. Face ID seems to be a lot better than Touch ID in most situations, especially for me. I cook a lot and my hands are constantly dirty and wet. Now I can just tap with a knuckle to wake my screen up and it'll automatically unlock with my face. It just has been kind of a whole different experience with an iPhone. I'd like to thank again my sponsor Kadabe for making videos like this possible. You can check out all of their cases and their information at the link below in the description. Let us know what you think of the iPhone 10 and what your experience has it been so far. Go ahead and let us know down in the comments. Please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Till next time, this is Andrew for IGB.